again before we can say, Lord, sometimes we have been building down so we don't even know how to pray. But this is what we ask you, Lord, if you be pleased. Give us what we need, Lord. Not only for me and mine, but Lord, we ask you to look all over the world. Let them know that we have no sorrow that heaven cannot hear. And we are waiting on heaven to speak to us. Let the church say amen. One day, Lord, it's going to be over. We know it. Lord, let us be a living witness. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, church. May God bless you and keep you and smile upon you on this fourth Sunday in August. We give God the praises. We bring you this message with the love of Jesus in our heart. And we praise him. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you for waking us this morning in our right mind and stunning us on another day's journey. We thank you, Lord, for the food on our table, the clothes on our back. We thank you for the rain and the sunshine. As we pray this morning, Lord, our prayers go out to Sherman Qualls. They go out to the father of Brother Don Danford. We're praying for his father. Uh, we're praying for Wade Gaskin. We're praying for Mary Frances Jennings. We're praying for Clarence Quiller. We are praying for everyone in this church family. Heavenly Father, especially for those that go back and forth to the doctors and hospitals, we are praying that you would just bless them and bless our children. Heavenly Father, they are back in school. Will you protect them and protect the staff? Heavenly Father, bless everything. Bless the food that we eat, Lord. Heavenly Father, bless the air that we breathe. Heavenly Father, be a blessing to us every day, Lord. And we thank you for being that blessing. You're already a blessing. Heavenly Father, help us to be a blessing to others. And oh, Heavenly Father, when we've done our very best and gone the last mile of the way, give us a home in your kingdom so we can praise you forever. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Just a few announcements before I uh, give uh, my message. Uh, our bishop is requiring the churches for the next three Sundays, starting with today, uh, for relief for the earthquake that was in Haiti. Uh, for funds set aside that we can get those funds to our elder uh, in the next uh, few Sundays from now. Uh, there will be a, a football game between Allen University and Benedict. This is on September the 4th at 6 p.m. The tickets are $25 each. And if you desire to go, let me know today so that I can let our presiding elder know that you need a ticket for this game. Our closing worship service for the Abbeville Greenwood District will be September the 12th uh, at 4 p.m. And as far as I know from speaking to our elder on last night, Elder Scott said it's most likely going to be a virtual worship service. But I will let you know more when I find out more. We will not have any uh, in-person church next Sunday, but tune in to Facebook and YouTube and you'll be able to see a brief message. So God bless you and keep you and smile upon you. Now I want to talk to you for our message today. Our message today is going to come from Psalms 1, verse 1 through 3, and Revelations 22, verse 1 through 5. And the subject of today's lesson uh, is, Shall we gather at the river? Shall we gather at the river? I remember hearing something about a preacher was preaching he was preaching a great message at a church full of people. And he was thinking about all of the people that strung out on drugs and drinking alcohol and all of these things. And the preacher, in his message, he said, I wish I had all of the beer in the world. I'd take that beer and throw it in the river. And the church said, Amen. And the preacher went on to preach. He said, I wish I had all of the liquor that I could find in the world, the moonshine, everything. I would take that liquor and throw it in the river. Church said, amen, hallelujah. He said, I wish I had all of the drugs in the world, all of these things that I can find, the marijuana, the cocaine, and all of that stuff. I would take that and throw it in the river. Church said, praise the Lord, amen. And then for the closing song, the choir got ready to do the closing song after the preacher had preached his message, Shall We Gather at the River? And the closing song was, Shall We Gather at the River? They wanted to know if they could gather at the river because all those things would be thrown in the river. But that's not the river that I'm talking about. That's a good song, Shall We Gather at the River? The song, I'm not going to sing it for you, but some of the words to that song is, Shall We Gather at the River? where the bright angel's feet have trod, with the crystal tides forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we shall gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river, gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. Rivers are mentioned in the Bible. Uh, first four rivers mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis, the second chapter, 
verse 10 through 14. Genesis, the second chapter, verse 10 through 14. When God made the world, he created everything and he created it good. But he created the world and man wasn't formed yet. And God caused man to be formed and he breathed into man and man became a living soul. God caused a rain to come up. The first rain didn't come down. The first rain came up from, from the earth and it watered the earth. And the first four rivers, back to the first four rivers as mentioned in Genesis 2 and 10, 14, these rivers is in Africa and Asia. They flow out of the Garden of Eden where God planted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And the first river, it surrounded the whole country of Fishon. It surrounded the whole country and there was gold in that country. These areas that we, we, we refer to today, some uh, say it's Iraq and others uh, in the heart of Africa. But God put man in this garden of Eden and he had the tree of knowledge and the tree of life in the garden of Eden. So these first four rivers was in this garden of Eden and everything was good. But I'm not talking about the rivers that's listed in Genesis, the second chapter. When I say, shall we gather at the river? I'm talking, referring to the rivers that listed in Psalms 1, 3, the third verse, Psalms 1, verse 1 through 3, I will read. This verse, these verses say, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standeth in the way of sinners, not sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water, that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. When we gather at that river, when we are like that tree that's planted by the river. The tree is nourished from the river. The tree brings forth good fruit in its season. And this is our season to be blessed. So we thank God that we can be like a tree that's planted by the river. We thank God that we can be like a tree that's rooted in him. A tree has many, has many branches but only one root. We branch out in family as family members, but we should all be rooted by the name of the Lord in his grace, in his, in his grace and mercy, because he should be our foundation. If we're going to grow, we got to be rooted in Christ. And then the scripture, go on another scripture that I want to give you is Revelation, the 22nd chapter, verse 1 through 5. And it reads, and he showed me a pure river of water, of life, crystal, clear as a crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and, and out of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, there was a tree of life, which bears twelve manners of fruit, and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree is for the healing of the nation. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God, of the Lamb, shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and their name shall be in his forehead. There will be no night there, and there will be no candle, neither light nor of sun, for the Lord God giveth light, and he shall reign forever and ever. I'm wondering today if anyone want to go to that river. Shall we yell at the river? The beautiful river. Beautiful river that flows from the throne of God. If we gather at that river, then everything's going to be all right. All pain is going to be gone. All suffering is going to be gone. Because Jesus said, I will wipe every tear from your eyes. We should gather at that river and hold hands with one another. And thank God, we don't have to look back and wonder how we got over. We know that it was Jesus that brought us over to the other side. It was Jesus that gathered at that river. But when you gather at the river, you got to cross Jordan River first. When you cross Jordan River, 
No one can help you to cross. Mother can't help you to cross. Father can't help you to cross. Only Jesus can help you to cross. So as we celebrate today here at Zion Chapel, we thank God that one day we're going to be able to gather at a river somewhere beyond the clouds. Don't have to cry no more. Don't have to die no more. We want to see Jesus, the man that died for us. We want to see Jesus, the one that made it possible. Let us gather at the river. In Jesus' name, we pray and we bless you with this message. May God keep you forever. Amen.